pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go with call to order roll call, starting on my right. Councilperson Josh Harn. Councilperson Brent Fire. Mayor Jimmy John King. Councilperson Craig Anderson. Councilperson Jeremiah Holgen. Looking for approval of tonight's agenda. I'll make motion to approve. Any additions from staff? None. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Uh, next, we'll be looking at the regular meeting minutes of July 28th, 2020, and be looking for a motion to approve those. So moved. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? A second. Um, the minutes of July 14th? July 28th, 2020. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Leave her and check her desk for any booze. <laughs> we got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That also carries. That takes us to finance and budget. You got the accounts payable with the additional listing there. Yeah, it was these two. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Anybody? I just had a question on the. Uh, I had a question on the Fulton. Is that covered by insurance, then? Uh, yes, that that's being covered by insurance, and we are we worked with the insurance adjuster and sent them everything that we need. We have not gotten the reimbursement check back on that yet, though. Okay. Is it back out there already, or no? Yeah. We can do it. Clean it up fast, too. Good. Any other questions on accounts payable? If not, I look for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. A second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, that'll carry. That takes us on to motions in general business. The first item tonight under motions in general business. How come I can't find the first item? Got it. No, 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 no. This Cheryl sabotaged this. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like the next one. <laughs> Girl Scout Troop 45014 will be presenting their ideas to add amenities to our dog park as part of their bronze award project. Due to COVID-19, they were not able to present last spring in person and created a video for us to watch. Troop leader Mary Becker, there she is. And a few of the girls will be in attendance to answer any questions we may have. The park board will be reviewing the proposal on Monday, August 10th, and will have their recommendation for the council. They're gonna play us a video now so that we can watch it. So let's take a look at the video.
Um, well, actually, Sean brought some things up. I don't know if you want to kind of go over what uh, maybe your concerns Just that were. we would like to be involved with them, helping uh, to make sure that uh, things are put in. We want things put in that will last and be a good asset and whatnot. Uh, and we just want to work alongside with you guys and help them do that. Okay. And I'm sorry, your name? Sean Hale. Sean Hale. Okay. Yeah, I'm the public works director. And I can give you my information uh, before you take on the video card so that when you're ready, you give us a holler. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, the park board, I thought they all thought that was, that was a really good idea and good project, and they really liked your, your guys' videos. And so, congratulations on that. It was really well done. Um, and yeah, see, for what uh, Sean just um, said, I think. How many girls in your troop? We have eight active girls. So they all get this bronze award then? Uh, well, no, there's five that have chosen to do it. Because of COVID, we found that there are some girls that are just having a real hard time being involved, you know, with the family situation and maybe health concerns. There's a few that have just decided that they don't feel like they're going to be able to commit to. They've each already spent about five hours Good. in the planning process and putting these videos together sure. and everything. And so they have another 15 hours in order to earn the award. And so we have three girls that just said, with our family right now, we just can't do it. So we have five that are interested in, well, in moving forward. It looks like a real worthwhile project. It is pretty, you know, we just got this thing going and we need some amenities out there and stuff. And I think it's a very uh, worthy project you girls are taking on. I'd like to make the motion that we go along with it. What are your girls' names? So we don't. Stand up and tell me right? You can take the master's. <laughs> I'm Jasmine, and I'm Clara. And what grade are you guys in? Um, six. Six? Okay. Thank you. And I'll make the motion that we do it with some in-kind help. I'll second it. We got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries girls, get to work. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you for thinking of the city. We yeah, thank you. Appreciate helping make our city uh, with a better quality of life and amenities for our uh, parks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Under general business, the uh, variance for a rear yard request. There you are.
Mike and Jennifer Brown of 807 Timothy Drive Northeast have submitted an application for a 13 foot rear yard setback variance from the required 20 foot setback for section 1325.05 building requirements. If approved, they would add a 26 by 52 addition to their home. The area is flagged. You can look at it prior to the meeting. Some of us have gone up and looked at it. They do have a second option, which would connect the addition on the west side of their home without any variances needed, but would entail removing their patio and two windows, one of which is an egress bedroom window in the basement. Second option would also make the addition more of a visual hindrance with the home behind them. The Planning Commission held a meeting and hearing on August 4th Activating the motion to deny the variance based on the following finding of the facts was introduced. All the finding of the facts are here. The motion was tied. Voting for denying the variance, Learman and Schroeder, with Swanson and Art, voting against the motion. Per Roberts' rules of order, the motion failed. It was the feeling of Art and Swanson that the variance option was a better option for the neighborhood. Mike or uh, Jennifer, or whoever's going to speak, would like you to stand up at the podium, please. Do we have uh, any questions for Mike? Because we're going to have to make a decision here. Is that the only, just looking at this, it seems odd to me. I mean, it's so wide and it's so far over to the east. I, I don't know if that was done on purpose so that you have more opening coming off your patio so that you have more of a yard there, or is it just, it looks like someone just threw this to me and it, it stuck. And so I'm just so curious what the thought process was about it. Um, the place well, if, you, if you look at the, the way that those two lots are, are 805 and 807 are laid out, the 805 kind of um, is almost set back behind our lot. So we're trying to move it to the most easterly position that we could get out of the way. So keep it out of the view of the current neighborhood that we have here. And also that we're keeping our easterly six foot setback. Um, so it, that's where it fit in, you know, to keep it out of view at, at the most, you know, opportunity. So it is the legal distance that it needs to be from the east side a lot? Yes, it is. Well, it doesn't look like it on this picture. It looks like it goes over it too. So you might not be able to tell on the map, but um, yeah, yeah. see this red line? Way to the east, that's their new property line. So the lot was platted at 85 feet and then Browns purchased another 16 feet oh, to the east. So, oh, so where I have the line in the X's, that was the original plan and then... This is what's purchased. Yeah, we purchased the, the lot. It actually goes further, it goes probably east. further. So it's from the, on the very east? Oh no, east. that would be X, I pulled that off. Yeah. But on yeah, the very, from the very eastern edge of the, um, <laughs> Addition, there's six feet you said there before the, the uh, lot line. Right. So that would that would honor the the six the six and ten um, required setbacks on the east and west side. This is a, a living space, right? Not like a, a detached garage or. It's an addition. Yeah. No basement, correct, Mike? No basement. Okay. Josh, you got anything to up easy? No, I think it, like you said in the notes, it was, it was kind of a split decision. Um, as a neighbor, I, I like the, the way it's proposed now versus what could legally be in there. For the reasons you said, is it's, if it's put in there without this variance, it's gonna be more noticeable. Um, all the trees that are there are gonna be taken out. Yeah. And it's gonna yeah. be more in front of the house behind you. Well, when we went and looked at it the other night, and what I really noticed is if it went the other way, I, I really like this position, but if it went the other way, I guarantee you there's going to be a snow problem removal in the wintertime with the driveway next to it, and there's going to be a water flow problem between those two properties. So this is actually the very best option I can see to, to put it on like that. Mm -hmm. And the email that we read had concerns about runoff and whatnot, obviously that would all be addressed to make sure, I mean, yep. it's going to be done professionally, so that shouldn't be an issue, right? Right. Yeah, they're good contractors, so. Yeah, the, the proposed location actually um, 
it is a positive for runoff. Um, if we put it in the, re the required or the allowed right. spot, we'd actually intrude in natural water drainage of that property. <coughs> it'd, make a, it'd make it for a worse condition. So by putting it where we are proposing, it's actually better for the, the layout. Very much better. The only thing really behind here, Craig, is that big pole shed sits over here. And it's, uh, so. Well, do we have any other questions from Mike? Does everyone have the questions answered that they want? If so, I'm going to put it out there for a motion to we want to approve this variance. I'll make a motion for approval. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Thank you guys. You're welcome to go now. I still think it looks kind of weird, but it kind of looks like their house is in yeah. the, that house's front yard anyhow. You know, just it the is. way it's yeah. set up. It is. It's right in the front. Well, look, the property line. We're going to see the guy over Next item up. Uh, Dan Hammer request exemption on building permit process. He's coming. Dan Hammer is requesting the ability to pull a building permit for his next fourplex on Daniel Lane Northeast prior to the street being completed. At this time, the street ends in the middle of the planned fourplex. Dan is requesting an exemption to complete only the 50 foot of roadway and utility extension needed for the fourplex. City Engineer Obernolte is recommending that Dan submit the preliminary plat and final construction plans for the completion of the full street, enter into a development agreement. By completing the street and following the grading plan, majority of the drainage issues in this development can correct. Once the plans are approved by Obernolte, which include the grading plan and the development agreement is signed with the fee submittal, a permit could be issued for the fourplex. If the street construction isn't completed, the certificate of occupancy will not be given on two of the units that don't have the street completed in front of them. So we're going to be looking at this request. Any questions for Dan? Or Dan, do you have anything you want to say? Well, um, no, except that, uh, you know, I would uh, just like you uh, to um, um, understand my situation where, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, uh, build affordable units for um, a lot of first time uh, home buyers. And, um, and we're trying to do it by, uh, you know, uh, keeping our costs down so that they can be affordable. And, uh, so, you know, we were in hopes that, you know, we could uh, start construction before the street uh, is completed and, and be able to do that uh, yet this fall, um, uh, whereby um, if, uh, if we have to wait until the street uh, in its entirety was, would be completed, that uh, it would be, uh, you know, we'd be out of business probably for uh, a year because it takes uh, eight months to build uh, uh, a fourplex building today. And, um, and of course, uh, uh, you know, you have to wait till next spring to uh, finish the street. And so basically, yeah, that would uh, we'd be out of business for a year. So um, that's why I'm just asking for uh, your cooperation. The street has already been uh, platted and approved many years ago. Uh, we're not making any changes to that um, other than uh, the upgrades. Uh, that um, that the city has currently, where uh, where we uh, must uh, put the drainage tile behind the curb, and uh, and so we've um, I've, I've had my engineer uh, draw up plans with that uh, change made, so that it's uh, you know to your current current uh, building code, and uh, and submitted it all for bids. So. Um, we're working on it, but we just, you know, we want to be able to kind of get a jump on on uh, that one particular building. So, so if, like always, I have a question. So uh, you're building, so you're that's going to go 50 feet north on Dan. That road now is going to be plotted out to go north and east and connect back up. Yes, that's correct. So, and you're asking to add on 50 feet of street right now, so you can build the next fourplex, right? Well, yes, that would be uh, that would be my. Uh, yeah, right. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what I'm reading, because then, what? So your side, you're, are you saying that he has to have a plan for the entire road showing 
showing the runoff and everything, or that he has to have the plan and complete the road before he builds the next four class? Right, complete the road before occupancy is allowed for the entire four class. So you can imagine if we start building 50 foot segments. So I think that would be a disaster. Exactly. Okay. Um, it, it just it won't work for the future. And really, we don't have a minimum length of road that can be built, but 50 feet maintenance wise, constructability wise does not make sense for something we're going to take ownership of for the future. So in a way of negotiation would be to say, okay, we'll move forward, get plans, get a development agreement in place for the entire roadway, get a grading plan done for the rest of this area that actually sure. fixes some of the draining problems we have out there. Um, and with those elements, allow the building permit to occur um, for that next fourplex, except for um, occupancy of two of the four cannot be there until the road is built. So as, if you put the plan together, I mean, he'd still, once the plan's approved, even if the road's not it, completed yet, he'd you know, still be able to start building the fourplexes, right? Correct. Yep. So because I can see, I respect where he's coming from, and I understand, I totally get it on the affordability-wise, mm -hmm. but, but the other side of me does, I'm very confused on building the streets in 50-foot chunks, and that, I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm not the engineer, but listening to the engineer, that I, I tend to agree with that. So, I mean, I'd like to find a landing spot here somewhere. So, that was kind of what was thought of. He would be able to start on that fourplex, get into that eight month process, the road could be built next spring, he'd get occupancy for all of them. So in the meantime though, if he were to get that whole all settled and have the plan getting going, working with you guys, he could steer, he could build that fourplex. He'd just only be able to sell two of them in the meantime, or rent them, or whatever they do. Correct. We tried to blend everyone's kind of requirements. Yeah, exactly. requirements. requirements. Well, no, and I get that too. Because yeah. at least he can get some money coming in to help pay for some of this. So my question says, recommending that Hammer submit the preliminary plat. Where uh, Mr. Hammer said he's already submit. Did you say he submitted a plat? Well, it's already platted. That, so, that whole parcel is platted already. So the right of way is plotted in there, um, and this was before my time also. Um, so we're reviewing what's actually in the plan, but a grading plan and the street plan need to be reviewed to meet the current standards. And I've asked Mark, uh, you know, well, my engineer to uh, get the information, you know, get our new uh, plans to you, okay. and he's working on that currently. I just spoke to him this afternoon again. So, so you know that they would, you know, they would meet your uh, specifications. But just so you know, we would require the, the entire street to go in, not just 50 feet. Well, yeah, I guess that's. I mean, so that's your decision. That's, in other words, the board, the it board, the board is not voting on it. Then. That's, no, we got to vote on it. No, we we'll vote on it. My recommendation. Okay. In the okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I misunderstood. What are the drainage issues? So the um, undeveloped portion of land, um, how it meets into what's already developed and built, there's just some drainage grading problems that are causing conning. Or um, if you look at the end of the lane, if you have the aerial in front of you, mm -hmm. um, the unit, the very end unit on the west side, um, there's actually no drainage or no slope away from that doorway or that unit at all. The entire side lot comes into that doorway or into that side of the house. So a drainage wheel would need to be corrected there. Um, the unit off of Clubhouse Drive on the corner of 20th, there's a lot of drainage problems there. And once the road is built, those could be taken. And certainly we would, you know, we would take care of, like we've always done in the past, we've taken care of any problems that we've had. Recently.
I don't know if they should. 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 Well, one thing about it, Dan, if you, you agree to do this, you'll be shovel ready on all the rest of your lots. You won't have to come back. You can just start building. Yeah. All things is mine. Yep. <laughs> That's what makes this world go around, you know. Yeah. Is this, I just have a question on this picture right here. There's this little white, this right here, is that a future house or you can't build there? Or what's, what is this right here? What's this one? You mean this? This little thing right here. Oh, right there? Yeah. Yeah, that's built. That's built? Yeah. Okay. That, okay. Those so, pictures, they don't show. Okay. Yeah, that's how they built. Okay. Thank you. What were you just asking about? Oh. Oh. I didn't know if that was the yeah, future. I was talking about okay. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the updated area from this last year. Yeah, so we have. So I just didn't know if that was right there. Okay. This was. Yeah. Well, here's the motion we have in front of us is to require Dan to submit a plans for the completion of Daniel Lane Northeast, enter into a development agreement, and then to allow him the building permit to be issued so he can start building. Anybody uh, like that motion or want to change that motion or make that motion? John, can you just quickly can you tell us the uh, disadvantages of the, just so everyone knows uh, of the add the 50 feet at a time? First is cold joints. So the more cold joints we put into the bituminous pavement or concrete pavement, the more problems we have in the future. That's just where we see shifting. Even if we do uh, put in rebar or tie things together in concrete, they, they tend to shift there sometimes. When it comes to bituminous, we don't have a consistent pavement. Um, more gold joints in the bituminous pavement, again, shifting. We don't, won't get proper overlap from the aggregates, things like that. So to minimize the amount of starts and stops that we have in construction, it's the best product we're going to get. So there's also, yeah, you can think of just putting 50 feet of water main in, digging down in that trench. How do you get proper compaction in with the road there? Things like that. Your limited construction, you don't have full operation of your equipment. So just to make sure that I, the recommendation, and I'm sorry to keep bringing up, I just don't want to make a screwed up motion if I make one, but get the plan together. If he gets the plan together, and then he gets a building permit approved, start building the fourplex. Even though the road, if the road is not completed, he still can get the occupancy on two of them. Correct. Two to the four. And then the other two wouldn't be approved until the road came in though, but at least we get some money back. Okay. But Those two will come out on the street that's already there. Right, that's what I yeah. that's how I'm getting it here too. So Yeah, and a part of what Cheryl wrote in there is the development agreement is would be in place for it all to happen, which would include the fees to complete. All right, we're looking for a motion. I'm, I'm going to go with that recommendation on that. I realize it's going to cost a little more money, but I feel like there's been some sort of at least uh, negotiation going on to try to meet in the middle. I do think in the long run it's going to be better for the neighborhood to have the road all completed at one time. I think ultimately that'll be better for him. Although I realize it ain't going to help you right now, that sucks, and I'm sorry I'm making that motion, but. That's the way I feel on this, so that's the motion I'm going to make. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate the consideration of listening to uh, you know, what my concerns were. Oh, I think they're valid. I, I totally get that. Sure. No, I understand. No, I'm guessing that my next round of golf is going to cost a double. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know. <laughs> but I do appreciate, the, you know, the fact that you round table and really gave it a good discussion and you didn't just slam the hammer. And uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll be able to sell two units and, and uh, we'll work with that and we'll make the best out of it. So, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you bet.
Next one, under motions and general business. Lot split. Radcliffe Holmes has applied for a lot split for lots one and two, block two, Peterson six subdivision. A new survey showing parcels A and B is attached. On the survey, the owner of the parcel A has asked that the lot line be moved to reflect what they always thought was the property line by where the sod was laid during the construction of the home. In retrospect, during the planning process, the property line should have been placed where we currently are proposing on the surveys that makes more sense. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on August 4th. We're now recommending approval of the lot split. Okay, Josh, once again, what do you have to say at the... Yeah, I think if you look at the, at the photo, you can see where the grass is, is, plant, is uh, planted there. So it's pretty obvious they just missed the angle on it and put it in the wrong spot of that property line. So okay. uh, we recommend it approving it. So we'd be moving it from where, it's, where the white line is up here now over to where the grass is. Yeah. Okay. Which actually does make look like it makes way more sense. It meets up with that, that other corner. No. Right. <clears throat> and I don't think anyone is, I think they're starting to build on this empty lot. I was out there today. There's a there's a house going up on it yeah. right now. So I talked to the owner of uh, Parcel A a little bit. Aren't you guys all just busy beavers running around town? <laughs> I got called in at 3 in the morning. <laughs> So we're looking for approval of the lot split as requested. Anyone want to make that motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. A motion a second. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That also carries. That will take us to the next one. It was uh, Bucknell Labor Regional Pond approving plans and specs. SEH has prepared the plans and specs for the Bucknell Labor Regional Pond Project. The plans include a portion of the current pond upgrade and his portion of the new pond for the extra capacity that will be needed to serve as subdivision, which Bucknell will be responsible for the cost of. The city has taken this opportunity to work with Bucknell and Rick Labor to mitigate drainage through the labor property from earlier developments in the southeast portion of town. Labor has agreed to deal to deed over land that will allow for increasing the size of the Bucknell Pond and create a regional pond. The city's cost of the portion of this project is estimated to be $193,481.50. Staff is recommending approval of the project and to use money set aside in the stormwater fund. If approved, quotes will be brought to council at the August 25th meeting for approval. And Council action requested then will be to approve resolution 2020 dash a resolution approving the plans and specs to seek two quotes for the project as per Minnesota statutes and city state for purchasing policy. Questions and discussion. If we approve this, are we going to try and start it this fall yet? Or? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, Jim still there? Meets all the Satisfies all of our. Yep, yeah, it would it would make it so the whole Bucknell area um, satisfies requirements, and then it actually would satisfy the requirements for the drainage area that comes to this location um, that was previously developed before the rules were put in place. So. All right. And Bill, we think it's going to help mitigate some of. Mr. Labor's problems over there and stuff too. Yep, um, it makes it look like it's an immediate help to him, but the bigger help is to the whole bird subdivision. Yep. And he's cooperating by um, allowing us to take some of his property as part of this process. So, so is there any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'm looking for a motion. Yeah, that's a donation. When I say taking, it's a donation I am to the city. <laughs> We've dealt with others. And, so. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. All in favor say aye to approve. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? That carries. That will take us to item number 31. Is it that one already? <clears throat> VFW Memorial Project. 
VFW project, City Participation with Water and Sewer. As you know, the city has been working closely with the VFW on their Veterans Memorial Park. Once the project is complete, we donate to the city as part of our park system, and it's something the city will be very, very proud of. The plan has been for restrooms with holding tank and no water. It is staff's recommendation that we partner with the VFW during the construction phase and upgrade their plans to a full restroom concept that would include sewer and water. Uh, Hale will work on quotes for the upgrade to the restroom. Permission is requested to extend our water sewer service lines from 2nd Avenue Southwest to the VFW property. This is a project that our Public Works Department will do in-house and the cost coming from water sewer enterprise funds. So the council action requested tonight would be approve the extension of the water sewer line services to the VFW property for a future restroom project. Now, should that also include? No, we'll bring the quotes back to you on the restroom action. So the restroom is going to be a different That'll night, a different, different project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm all for it. sewer and water working to take everything away. So I'm going to vote. I'm going to make a motion that we approve this. Okay. We have a motion to approve the sewer water lines. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Favor city. Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Now I believe on the restroom part when we get to it, just to give them all a heads up, isn't that going to be they've got an estimate of around eighteen thousand for what they originally thought. We're going to look and see what the difference would be and possibly do the difference from what they're Yeah, they were originally looking at more of a remote type restroom station. And what we'd prefer since it'll become part of the park system is what we've now done in Bryn Park. Meadow Park and out by the SYA building, a very similar type restroom to that that's basically fully plumbed. And so their budgeting for the remote, we thought maybe since we would see a bigger benefit long term for the improved restroom, if maybe we could help out with whatever that dis uh, difference is that you're yeah. In 2013, the bathrooms that we put up uh, were 35 and 38,000. Each one, one was a little bit cheaper. That's what I thought, the SYA one, the one at Derrick Cave, I thought it was like 30, 35 or 40. 30,000. Yeah. Not yeah. cheap. So we'd be looking at the difference. $20,000. But that was 2013. Yeah. Obviously, have inflation and price have gone. Price have gone. So. So. Can you use some of that CARES Act money for that stuff too or not? No. No? That one would be tougher, you know. You can apparently if you're making a touch list. Say you can't touch list. Yeah, the fixtures. That's right. <laughs> Look at that certificate, yeah. but you got to spend it fast. Yeah. All right, well, we can look at approving that at the next meeting. So. Yeah, and if there's a consensus, that'll help us keep going with. Well, we want you to look at it. We want so. to find out what the yeah. estimates are and stuff. Because yeah. I, know, I know you want a little bit of an upgrade for the a little bit of a storage area in the back and where you can do water shut off. Well, that would be, that's all part of our plans. That's, that's what I mean. With the existing. Yeah. I'm surprised there's not, no. Uh, Construction companies that would be willing to do some in kind work. Well, they may find. They may. Sean may find yeah, something. They're, they're getting so already. Like, the concrete work you've seen already is, from what we've heard, a donated uh, feature of construction already. So. Labor portion, anyway. But we'll discuss that at the next one. But okay. we just passed. We did get. I did get the vote here, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So that passes. Next. Ooh. Guess what? Now we're at the CARES Act. Resolution approving CARES Act allocation for departments. The city received $469,897 of the Corona Relief Fund dollars to help offset the impact from the COVID-19 pandemic. The re reimbursable expenses must be incurred from March 1, 2020 to November 15, 2020. All expenditures must satisfy three elements. Necessary due to, unaccounted for expenses, incurred during covered period, incurred expenses. These funds will be used to upgrade bathrooms at all sites that have a minimal or touch-free environment, business supplemental grant through the EDA, cameras and video equipment for virtual meetings, cleaning grant, EDA drinking fountains, fire hall de decontamination area, hand sanitation stations, public works tools, touch-free doors, supplies, and other items that are qualified expenditures to help stop the spread of this disease. So it shows the percentages broke down there for you to each part. Council action requested would be to approve or deny the allocated use of funds for qualifying CRF funds. So I don't know the rhyme or reason behind this. I'm guessing Carla's mathematical brain figured it out because it's <laughs> you broke it down nicely. 
my concern, which isn't a huge concern, but man, it'd be great to spend 70 grand here and 70 grand at the library and public works and everywhere and other places might need it more here. I look at this and I see the money coming in and I realize that as a government, we, we got hit. Um, but if 77% of the money is sticking with us and only 23 in grants out to the rest of the community, I guess I would, for, I would prefer seeing more money going out to the community, not tons, but even if we could tweak it somehow and get it up to 30% of the money um, or something like that. or you know, Well, I guess you got EDA on there, so 30. I'd like to see that we could somehow get more money in the grant stuff. Well, the other thing to consider is it, it is the grants that are in there, but anything that we do within the library, um, City Hall, the Civic Center, and all of that, those things are going, going to come back to the community for the touchless environments. It's going to keep us safe, you know, like for the Civic Center to be able to be open and have those things available as well. I get the Civic Center part. I don't know how many people are going to come in here and go downstairs and use the bathroom and be glad that they didn't have to turn the water on. Right. I think it's necessary for employees. I'll go with that. Right. I, I really actually think if you wash your freaking hands, whether you touch it or not, you're going to be fine. And that's why you got hand sanitizer. And that's a whole other argument. But uh, that's just my two cents on it. When I read it over, that's the feeling I got. Um, it, that, that's just where it's at. It doesn't mean it's good. Or, I know we're, it's all going to good stuff because it has to. But. Well, let me ask you this question to follow up on Craig's. If you designate it to that department, if you need another 5,000 here, say from the city hall to the fire hall or something, can it be moved around? Absolutely. Once, once the you only, designate it, yeah. it's stuck there? We, the, they just, the League of Minnesota Cities recommended that we do this so that we had something in place so that come audit time, right. but there's not nothing saying that exactly this amount needs to go there. This just gives us a good idea. Things are then, it kind of covers our behinds to go forward with it. But if we, we here at City Hall go, we need 20,000. The, the other 50, we want, it can go to the fire department. We, they really have all these other needs that we don't have. Or we need it to go to the Civic Center or to the library. Or, just or some as other Craig said, place. we can send it to the EDA to send right. out to the business community. If Absolutely. So but there is a short timeline. This money yeah. has to be spent before November 15th. Well, I understand that. So well, that's why if we're going to be giving us. more, we need, those businesses have to have time to prepare. Too. Well, we're hoping for like a round two at some point where we can maybe direct more to community as well, right? Are they thinking about maybe getting more money out again, or is that not in the works? No? I don't think any more money out on this, but the thing is with the EDA grants, I can tell you that the EDA is already working on it. They're meeting next week. They already have, in preparation of us have getting this approved, they're going to get their stuff approved for their grant program that they're trying to do. So. But even, so I guess the question is, Carly, even if it didn't get all, if we don't get enough, we're going to have a, probably a different timeline in November on the EDA grants, I believe, aren't we? No. We're going to try to run it right at the end. We, probably we, have, we don't have up. a choice. So, so, so if we didn't know that was going to be gone, we could move that money back somewhere else. If they it, so if we don't use this money, we have to give it back. No, I understand that. So what I'm saying is. It has to be. If we didn't, if, that's an EDA discussion to have, I realize that, but. I think some quickest way to give it away. If we use the shorter timeline on our grant applications, we'd know before the November. Yep, and that's what if Joy we has planned. Yes, else. and that's yep. exactly what Joy has planned. Either okay, that that's, or, what, that's what I was asking. Or she's got, I think the set amount that she was talking about was like $2,500. And she said, so what they could do is they got that timeline in there, but if there's still money left over, she could open it up and maybe for another week and say, okay, if you have more expenses, we could give you $2,500 more. All right. All right, just so we know we can kind of shuffle stuff the way after we. Yeah. Is that kind of where you were at? She, yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, I, I look at this and I understand it's kind of being spent quick, so it makes sense that we upgrade everything around here. And I, I'm just in my head. I'm not a plumber, obviously. I know that stuff's expensive, but I would think that we could get everything up to code and, and reimburse for the plexiglass and things like that a year for like 50 grand. And then that gives you 20 more grand yep. that you, we could throw out into the EDA grant. Yep. Yep. And I would like to make sure, I just want to make sure that the people, they're, they're facing the same costs that we are. Yep. So I want to make sure that we're, as an EDA, that we're able to have uh, money to actually help them rather than just maybe just a little teeny bit of money. Yep. So uh, that it's, I'm okay with this. I just wanted to get my. You think on EDA we could include farmers within two miles of time? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, we can definitely reallocate funds if we have, if 
we think we need to do that. Uh, absolutely. So this is just a base plan. So we got something. Yeah. Sure, yeah. going forward. All right, I, I can live with that. All right. Any other questions or discussion? And then the action be to approve or deny the allocated use of funds for qualifying CRF funds. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a second. I'll second that. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Next up here is library page position. Alyssa Jones. In August, we'll be losing both our library pages as well as our intern to college. We received a number of quality applicants and conducted phone and in-person interviews with a number of candidates. While illness and summer travel prevent us meeting with two additional finalists, I would like to offer one of our vacancies to Alyssa Jones. Alyssa is an excellent student and will with long, strong, circle ties. She will make a great fit on our team. We hope to finish interviewing page candidates next week and have another library page to bring before the council by the end of August. So the council action requested would be to approve or deny Alyssa Jones to be hired for position of page. I'll move to approve. Second. Second. Starting when? Cheryl. Sure. Right away? Um, well, end of August. I'm not sure. Okay. I think probably right away. Okay. Just one minute. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Can you wait to go on to yep. the next one? Yep. Yep. We're going to have them up front, or where are we going to put them? Feasibility study. SEH has prepared the feasibility study for the West development. They will be presenting it for formal adoption. The next step would be to prepare development agreements with the property owners and to set the terms of the SAC WAC fees along with any term limits. So, SEH, the show is yours now. We might have problems again. With the computer again. Everybody here looks nice. All right, can everybody see that okay? Yep. Any bigger at all or bigger than here? Bigger than here. Okay, all right. Well, so we took a look at this property here in the Northwest. Uh, if you can see the outline right there in red, um, I-90 forms the Oh, I guess the west boundary south is sort of where the sewer shed would, would form from that area, and then north south. The areas, uh, so this is sort of the existing conditions of what we what we started with. Um, the areas in kind of light purple are the areas that are um, 
currently proposed to be developed. Um, you got the one acre lots right in the middle there. Um, and then uh, along the realigned road there is the new, where the new apartments are going in right now under construction. And then in the southern part is the El Chia property. So we wanted to highlight those and kind of, you know, obviously we're going to work around those. And um, so we got about a total of just about 305 acres. And this plan also just shows there's some wetlands that are out there. Um, just based on the National Wetland Inventory, they're not, they're not delineated or anything, but so there are some wetlands there. So we wanted to identify that. And then all the other lines are the contours. All right. So, so what, I, what, I, what I kind of walked through is sort of just the process that we use to um, just the process that we use to go about developing a plan. And so just kind of walking through the different layers that we look at. This is the existing zoning. Um, there is no real zoning on this property because it's outside the current outside the uh, state limits. But you can see there's R1 up in the north, and then uh, Barricade Park is the part of open space and where the school is. And so, so that didn't really, that didn't really tell us a whole lot, I suppose. Um, so then we looked at the land use, the future land use, and um, the, in the upper part is kind of the R2, which is sort of a medium to low density in the north. Uh, there's some R1 in the middle of the site, and then um, and then R, R1, low density residential on the, on the southern part, but then the rest is um, industrial, M M1. So, so we had some discussions about that, and I know you're going to be updating your comprehensive plan soon, in a year or so, and so I think this was a good discussion to have about why, why was that industrial and should that be industrial, and the conclusion amongst the staff was that since there's really no access on 90 there, that this probably isn't the best spot. There are other, other locations in the city that might be better for industrial, that this probably doesn't make sense for this to be industrial land use. Then we looked at access. And um, one of the things about access is uh, the county has access standards, um, especially on facade 35 through there. They, you know, they they have certain spacings based on the type of street that it will be, whether it's urban, arterial, or rural. And, and um, also another key to the access is, is property ownership because that's also how land develops is by by people who own property and. All, all parcels need to have access. So this was just kind of a preliminary study of where, where access points would, would go, potentially where they could go. Um, they'd like to be across from each other. They need to be further apart from each other. And so looking at, just kind of taking it at the next step is uh, at the whole, looking at the whole site and looking at access. Of course, there's existing driveways as well. So those aren't going away. Um, but as, as the property does develop, we'll need to work out with the county um, where, where they would allow um, the access. And I think as a community, you'd want, to, you'd want as many accesses as possible. You know, it looks like this scale, it looks like they're real close together, but you know, those are you know, quarter, quarter mile apart, some of those. So it, it's, it's um, you, you, know, you gotta put it where it makes sense. If there's existing driveways, existing cuts there, then you wanna use those. So we just, again, studied where it made sense to take access. And again, there's no access, obviously, on, on I-90, so. And then also, not only access to the site, but also off the site as well. All right, then open space was the other thing we looked at. I mentioned that big, large wetland kind of dissecting through the middle. Um, so there's also uh, a lot of some, some drainage corridors through there. There's some steep slopes along those areas. So we just wanted to identify those as a part of the planning process where those fit. And those are likely they're not to be developed. So um, how can they be utilized as open space and maybe how can those open spaces be 
connected, you know? So, so if you were to have the next step look at open spaces, well, how can these open spaces connect? And I'm thinking connections for walking or biking or trails or things like that, you know? Um, to create, you know, again, it could be that it's in the backyards of places, and so, so this just kind of looks at looks at it holistically. How does how do these open spaces relate to other open spaces in that whole area? How can it be connected? Then then we looked at again. If we look at the access points, you can figure out well where the streets could go, and um, you start to look at streets. Actually, you kind of want to look at. You want to look at homes too. Where where were the homes? Where would be the best spot for homes or townhomes or whatever? And then so again, you want to probably put them up against those corridors because people like to have access to open space and have that in their backyard. Or or how how would it work? And so so you lay out the homes and you kind of lay out a, a network of streets. And um, one of the last things we looked at was parks. So. So there's a huge, obviously, Bear Cave Park, huge regional park, and you know, you, 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 ideally, you want to have everybody have a 10-minute walk to a park or an open space, and the smaller circle shows a five-minute walk, and then the larger circle shows a 10-minute walk. So you're pretty, you know, for the most part, you're, you're covered, you know, for your your parks. And I think so. We identified some areas outside that 10-minute walk, and those are associated with those natural resources as well. Some of the wetlands, and they're adjacent to some of those, or there's steep slopes, or there's there are you know just any um, there are some you know trees and um, right right in through right in through here there's kind of some nice grove of trees and some steep slopes and so we're just in a maybe a small pocket type park half acre or for a playground or something so that was the next step and then finally so finally we we looked at we kind of put it all together. And this isn't very clear, but I'm going to try to kind of explain what the, the different, um, you know, these are different land uses. So there's a, there's a road layout, and then there's, there's lots, but it's meant to have flexibility, you know, because, um, you know, it, because, again, this is just sort of a moment in time. And so we wanted to offer some flexibility. The road layout, I think, is, is, is pretty solid, but you can obviously change the width of the lots. Some of the depths are pretty standard, but so we used a mix of one acre lots. So the areas in blue um, would get would be one acre lots, and we did the you know that was was one of the original proposals. So we kind of kept that in there, and then we also did half acre lots, which is more of a kind of more of a tan color there. There it's hard to see that, but, um, and those are 120 feet wide by 180, so that's, that's still a pretty healthy size lot. Third acre lots. 90 by 160, which is more typical for a store bill around in that around that range, and those would be some of the um, that's more of the yellower ones right there that are kind of backed up the corridor. And then <clears throat> thinking about you know affordability and other other smaller lots, you know maybe 70, 75 feet wide um, for some more modest type homes, and so we have some of those sprinkled in there, and then also townhomes and and villas. So villas are just sort of compact, large homes on small lots, and and but in townhomes we know what those are. So we tried to create the transition. Townhomes would be transitioned from the multifamily, so you have a transition from higher density to medium density, and so um, and then we had and then there's open space, which is the green. So so that's that's kind of a summary of of how we went about this. I thought it'd be better to show you how we went about the process and the just. Than to just put that plan up there, you know, and it's more about how did we get there. And I know the the reason why we're doing this is to look at the look at the utilities. And I know there's, there's a lot of development pressure in that area. And we want the city want to be proactive and look at well, how could this develop, and then what does it mean for the cost to run the run the utilities out there? And um, so the developers, have, developers would have a better idea what what the cost of development would be. So. With that, I'm going to hand it over to, to Jenna. Unless, unless you have any questions about kind of through that process, but I'll hand Anybody over. Anybody got any questions? All right. All right. Thank you.
sparked this was the utilities and um, to get to the Legends 20 area right here in the center and also down south here, all Chaos property. Those are the first developers who wanted to go ahead. How do we get utilities from where we ended in Bear Cave Park, which is actually um, you know, 11th actually runs here right now, and we do need to reroute it in the future um, per the county. Uh, and so we have looked at realigning, and we have done some land swap to, to get the park land dedication corrected um, for that. And so there is a manhole that is out on the side of the road, the ground road right now, which is the sanitary sewer that can serve this entire west development area. Um, we also have water main just at 11th um, out on the street, so right off the county road. There are a few natural obstructions, so there is a drainage way that comes down through here, and then other people's property that these developers are looking at. Well, how do we get these utilities across that area, um, and at what expense if we're way over Way over here, you know, should they be putting in the utility extensions that other people can utilize then at their expense versus could that be a city cost or a city project that then gets reimbursed? So what we looked at once Andy got through the layout and everything is we started putting in the utilities and where did the trunk mains um, need to go for sanitary sewer and also for um, the water mains. And really looked into those areas that are going through non developable areas. You know, and how to get service with the sanitary sewer. We want to run along this low area so that we can keep gravity sewer to everyone um, and utilize cheap pumping which is gravity flow versus paying for the stations and maintenance and everything else. So um, really looked at it that the lines that are actually in color are the lines that are, would go out there for the improvement of the entire west of all. Um, so then we took an estimated cost to put in those lines and this whole thing doesn't have to be done at the same time, but for everybody and to figure out how to get reimbursed for the cost of these stubs that would be placed in by the city, um, really broke that down for acreage of the available acres out there to create a new whack and sack for this area. So our current whack and sack it's 2,000 for sewer per acre and 2,000 for water per acre. And what we estimate, uh, our estimate comes, breaks down to be is if the city is agreeable to put in these parts of the projects, these trunk means and water means when they are needed, um, that the developed acre would pay an additional wagon sack total of $5,600 per acre on top of that $4,000. So nearing $10,000 per acre for water and sewer for all of the property developed in the West Development. So, um, Now, if you take that in comparison, that's a lot of money from where we started, where we were at doing 4,000 per acre to nearly 10,000 per acre um, to, for water and sewer. Um, that's to reimburse the city and the cost of making these extensions to pay ourselves back for those 
support to all the properties that benefit from those mains. Um, if you the okay, Stuartville and Rochester are two different cities, but if you want to throw into comparison what Rochester is doing, um, they've recently put into plan a new SAC for the entire city, and it's a different SAC for different regions. The least expensive one is 8,000 for sewer alone. The most expensive is nearing 40,000 per acre for sewer alone. So, Sewerville is different, um, but I just want to use some comparison of what's going on in the area and how cities are really looking at different areas to get utilities um, and to be able to service these extensions. So that amount of money could be paid for by the city at a certain proportion if the council sees it to be a good investment for the city. But what I really looked at was how do we put the project in and get reimbursed for what is being installed for that area of town hall. Any questions? Would this be our new whack sack for the entire city, or is this just for the West Just for the West Development. So the normal 2000 whack sack would stay for the entire city. For this alone, where the city is putting in investment to extend these trunk mains, um, this would be an additional whack and sack for this part of the city. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, man. You refer to the city of Rochester, but, but that's like you say, it's not a comparison. So, what is like Byron or Yoda or Island or something that's kind of like you know close that would compare to, <coughs> to the Stuartville? Um, What's your whack and sack to use? I haven't looked into the um, finance committee. We did that study what two years ago. Do you remember we were kind of in line with it? What everybody else was doing. Do you remember, Frank? I can't remember what the numbers were. I was thinking because we did look at. I know we were a little less, but it, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, because we looked at was at the time to increase, and you had decided it wasn't because we were either less um, or about the same. We're about the same. Rochester's are going up because a lot of theirs are undersized main, so they have to go back and redo a lot of the old main that's in there because it's undersized. So that's why theirs are increased so much. Yep, so theirs has the cost to redo a lot of things that would be undersized if new development was put on, plus the cost to extend the means to where it needs to go. Did we, Jan, did we ask you, or did we look at making like a hybrid where this would be the, the, the 4000 but there would be an assessment cost per lot for the other, basically 5000 or whatever it is? Didn't we look at something like that? Be, Instead of coughing up the 9,000 an acre right up front, I thought, didn't we? I think we talked about that. Yeah, I thought we talked about something on that too. Did we talk about uh, the 4,000 up front and then uh, accessible? So, and that is up to the council of how they want to put it on there. It could be 4,000 up front for developer's cost, and then when the property is sold, you have an assessment. Well, wait, a connection fee or something, or what was it being put on? So we usually take care of all of it though at development with the last and stock and development costs. So and part of that would be broken down if like, a lot of cities their connection fees are a set fee per lot per connection, whereas we figured this out by acre and obviously that changes by how many lots are out there what type, what size of lots actually gets built to get that figure figured out. Okay, I asked Jen and now I'm gonna ask the developers, what do you think of that 9,000 per acre? What's that? Well, I mean, you're the ones that are gonna be paying it.
what I'm asking, I guess, is it a big enough game changer that would uh, no to the development? You'd say, no, 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 we can't do that. That's too much. I mean, we're not trying to find a magic number, but we're trying to make this work for everybody, too. I, I, so here, here's just my personal thought about Stewartville as a whole. Stewartville needs something a little bit better than what we have. And, and I, I think it, I think Stewartville's working down a path that I just, I, I see the you know, trailer park expansion, small homes on small lots, even though they're nice, you know, Marv's got some very nice houses, stuff like that. But there's nothing with any size that's going to draw money and people in to this community. I think there's a lot of people that live in southwest Rochester right now that would prefer to live down here if they could get a house on a bigger lot. That's what I have a bigger lot, a one acre lot. I mean, I, that's why I realize this is expensive and it's that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, but I feel like that's what we need to do. And that's why they moved from here to there. Exactly. So, you know, that's why so much so. Right. That's what we so. Unless you do something to bring it back, and I understand that you have to pay for this, I, I get it. But additional cost to bring that in isn't, I mean, we'd be better off to just go a third, third lots, because it's by the acre. When we be better off to go a third lots and just smother it with a bunch of small homes again? Well, you're paying the same whether you put 10 houses on an acre or one house on an acre. Right. It's by the acre. I mean, it's by the acre. I mean, you know, that'd be nice too because then your name could be more mud than ours by putting in this mobile home park. Yeah, that's Wayne Gunderson, G U N D E N. Yeah, so here's what we need to do. I think everybody's in agreement. Obviously, you guys have vested interest because you guys are going to be the ones making money off this. We, as a city, I think, need it because I think our city's ready for it and we need to have more to offer, and I, I, I've always thought since I've been on the board that we got to come up with something. I mean, just can't, we have all these starter homes, and that's just not doing it. And, and uh, I, I just don't know how to get it. I mean, the city can't, I, don't, I wouldn't feel that I was doing my job or that I, would, I was um, being respectful of the entire city if we were to just say, oh, we'll swallow the cost, take it out of, whatever water contingency, this, that, or the other, just because we need it. But I also, I don't really agree with you guys taking it, you know, too. So, I mean, I, the last time I know we had a conversation about different ways that it could be paid off, which was beneficial to the developer because you wouldn't be paying it until the lot was sold and it would allow you to have be a little more liquid with it, but I don't remember what we had figured out. Well, let's we can do a little housekeeping here and get this resolution passed on this feasibility study and talk about the development agreement after that, right, Cheryl? Yes, yeah. Well, yeah, tonight we're just talking about moving forward with the feasibility for right, it. Right, yeah. accepting yeah. the feasibility study, and then it, but I think then you guys need to sit down and really look at how put together a couple of options, maybe, yep. um, and then come back. But we want to do this in a timely manner because, okay. you know, Chiap does want to start moving forward. Yep. Um, so does and it's Wayne, kind of already right? held up a year for you guys, you guys would like to move forward sooner than later also, right? If mm -hmm. possible. To move forward, you said? Yeah, I mean, if we could work something out that you guys would... <laughs> sure, but we... As we were talking along the way over, I said... I was told not to say any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at her going. <laughs> 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 we're not the only ones. We're not going to try to do that. No, you know how happy everybody can see developers here? Because there's years that I've complained about developers. We need to get this shit about this, this shit about that, not having the guts to go forward with anything. So, you know, everybody says we need this, we need that, and nobody's would come forward. Nobody 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 would come forward. And then that would piss me off. Well, now we actually got you guys coming forward. So now's the time we need to start talking and make something happen. So we, we got we have some preliminary numbers, Bill, right? Mm -hmm. But we haven't really got. I mean, we're not really like down on the hard number yet either. No, Cheryl, well, put yours in here and say a dollar ninety-eight and eight. Just give her a piece of building stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, you can get out. You get out from. Yeah, something that we can get out for bids. So yeah, yeah. 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 Just a second, folks. We're going to get this feasibility study out of the way first, and we're going to continue this discussion here. Correct? 
But you can, it, it doesn't matter which way you do it. Oh, okay, it doesn't? No. Oh, okay. Not for the discussion. <laughs> So on our, on, our, on our part, I'm just looking at, you know, obviously we have to make money. If, if, uh, if the land sits there and we have to pay your taxes, you know, I mean, if we can sell it out right away, which is, I got a feeling that we got a lot of people looking, we're fine, but we got to hold on to that sucker. We don't know, we don't know what, you know, the future brings. COVID really messed up a lot of things. Um, I'm not trying to talk negative on it, but I'm just trying to be more realistic. I was surprised being in construction, especially developing construction, now that we're developed. I've heard every, every developer complain about how expensive it is. And when we ran the numbers and got down to it, I'm like, whoa, it's expensive. I'd be better off going to the stock market with some money than I would be to, to develop. And that's how tight it gets. So, Six thousand additional dollars doesn't sound like much, but it is a big deal because it's a it's a tax thing. Because it means that me buying that I have to pay ten thousand more because you're going to make your money one way or the other. It's just going to be well, hard to sell. You can't price, you can't overprice a lot. No, I get that, but the reality for home buyers, though, would that used to think they could come to Spurgo and buy a lot for forty thousand dollars. You got to get a more realistic view. Sure. If I'm going to build, I mean, it's I got to be prepared to be hit with the big bill. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I blame Jonathan for the expenses. This is way more expensive than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if, if Jenna, if there's, there's a double side of that Rochester thing. If they're going to charge that kind of money, there won't be any problem. There won't be. So then the people are going to, yes. Yes, then people are going to start looking. You know, mm -hmm. so. Well, so tonight's not the night we're going to hammer out a number, though. No, tonight you're just accepting the feasibility study, and then we need to sit down and put some options together. <laughs> I think you that's awesome. Are here, so being able to put some things in front of them, mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. ah. Well, at least we got numbers out there that people know what we're thinking about each way. But right. we need, yeah, we got to set something up. I mean, this is awesome that you guys all came and violated the COVID rules for any one room. Al, what do you got, Al? Yeah, you know, we've been crunching numbers now for over three years, and um, uh, there's some blessings that, you know, I didn't jump on it right away because other things would develop, but, um, you know, when the 10,000 was thrown at us, that, that's a lot of money, and, you know, now you got to evaluate what the value is going to be, and, um, you know, where is that break, and break point, you know, get, you know, the feasibility of doing it? Um, I'd like to ask you folks to look at the agenda proposed for all of it. Is there an option where you don't put it all in and then that number comes out? So because if, if that whole front goes south to down by um, barricade storage, if that's not needed for another 20 years, because John's not going to develop, why put it in today and let it sit that long? So the proposal isn't to put it all in today, but Al is not it's not fair to you to put in a certain amount of it and you pay for all of it at a certain size and then somebody else has to pay a different price. We were looking at to service the whole area, what in the future will be needed using today's construction dollars and dividing that out by all of the developable acres. We put it in as it's needed. We don't put it all in now. Just as the cost needed. is up. The total cost is up for me. The t So, for your what it would break down to, if you're the only one who goes in and develops right now, that cost is pretty much going to cover what was put in for right. you. Yeah. Um. But now, if Gunderson's developed theirs, we obviously need to work with Mark and go up through his property. We're going to be putting in a lot more pipe. That makes sense. Mark will pay for it someday in the future when he develops. The city will ride that cost, and Gutterson will pay for their portion of it. Um, and but it all gets divided out by everyone that's serviceable in this area in the future. So yes, yeah, some of this might be 20, 30 years down the line if people don't develop before the city gets reimbursed. And if I remember right, that's developer acreage. 
So the wetlands are still here. Added to that area. Okay. Yeah. Bill, can you do you know in the past has the city helped out uh, with whack and sack costs to get a development going? Uh, the biggest project we undertook was to get the Schumann Business Park. The city did get a main put in there, and then there was a combination of if there was an immediate benefit to somebody, some of those costs started getting reimbursed, and then there was deferred assessments. And then as the development became available or became usable, then those costs would start getting uh, reimbursed. And that was probably the biggest thing. You all, or the city has had experience with maybe helping out with um, oversizing. And then the first option you threw out, is there a way to finance this remaining 5,600? I think the developers have to understand the 4,000 is gonna be there no matter what happens. And now, what <coughs> options do we come up with for that remaining 5,600? Is it a fully reimbursable thing? Will we give them time to do that? Or is maybe there's some common areas that you as a council would say, you know what, it makes sense for us to show some incentive to pay for that. Then does that 98 or 5,600 drop down to 51 or 47 or something like that, which that automatically makes it more palatable. So, so can we take that money from the water and sewer funds, or where is that money available at that we could put the pipe in or help? A, a help with putting the pipe in. Yeah, these are straight enterprise fund yep. projects. So we okay. do borrows or loans uh, from those those funds, and then those funds get reimbursed once the development takes place or once the assessments uh, get put into place. So just being an enterprise project, it's the property taxes doesn't really offset it then. No. Not now. No. It come from the water and sewer fund. Right. Yeah, and with the exception of that, the big main that went out to Schumann Business Park, most of our developments automatically hooked on to an existing one, so we've never really had to deal with common areas. In this project, since it's a whole new, not even in the city yet, We've got roads to cross or sections to cross. Mm -hmm. And it would be those areas that you would maybe consider helping out as a city incentive to spur on all of it. And then that automatically helps buy down that 56 for, for all the developers. So. And that probably gets at what Craig was mentioning, that hey, there is probably a category the city no. could delve into as we want to grow in all directions. So, um, I don't know if you guys can answer this or are willing. So, it's 4,000 for a current whack and sack plus the five, 6,000, what, what would be a number that you'd like the city to try to help with? 10,000. <laughs> they have the 4,000 no matter what. Yeah, they have the, if you guys have the 4,000 no matter what, I mean, I mean, is 2,000 an acre, is that more to swallow? Did that city pick that up, or is, uh, do you have any? Anything's going to help, obviously, the bottom line, yeah. so it's that's hard to say. And I guess that's what you're going to say. Some, uh, but I, some cities um, will chip in for, say, a river crossing or a jack and more under a highway, something that's unusual. And then they do second wipe for the rest. But the, the city picks up something unusual like that as a way of kind of knocking that down. Because that serves a, 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 an area, or in case of water main looping, that benefits everybody, things like that. So there's different ways you can kind of justify it. Are we going down to county right away with the water line? Mm -hmm. And we also know that. We can't bore it? No. It was proposed when we were trying to bring service out to the um, to their high school to bore it. And they ran into too much rock. So it had to be healthy, but. Do you know what the, or you could figure out the number to run the water line down the county right away and to do the cut across the road for the sewer? 
Yeah, we can figure out the cost for the sewer to come up and cross the county road, cross that drainage way, and then go down the right way. Because we are talking, you know, like Bill said, it is an unusual circumstance there to get it to them in a way. I mean, we got to get it. They got to get it somehow, but I don't know how much of an impact that would have on the whack and sack. Well, can we look at that and also double check like what Chatfield and Byron and just the area are charging in currently to get an idea and then try to get together here in the very near future and get something figured out? Why, Jenna, I guess I, I just got to ask you, why did we decide to change the number on the whack and sack for the West Development? I mean, why why did we go up to basically 10,000 compared to four everywhere else? Why? That is, so we were only looking at those common places, the places that go under a river or um, the portion that goes up along the wetlands or the drainage that you know, really no one's developing on right. it is just a trunk main right. but that's the way it needs to go through the land to yep. be most cost effective to be able to service everybody right. through um with the gravity flow yeah if but i guess my question is i haven't got a problem with picking up the odds and end or the odd stuff like that mm -hmm. but on normal developments don't we make the developer pay to get the sewer line there anyhow on all developments we make the developer pay to get the sewer line sewer line there or water line there, but it's usually right there. But yeah, so, I know, but are we, so are we saying we're raising the whack and sack because we're going to... So we're <coughs> saying we're raising the whack and sack to pay for all these trunk lanes that don't directly service one developer. In, in, if somebody comes in and wants to do a development northeast or southeast, and it, and it has the features like this where there's going to be an expense up front. You should probably look at that area and say, this area needs a certain second line. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. you know, kind of balances up, but it's got to be a big enough area that it makes sense. Right. You know. And I mean, I understand what you're saying, Jenny. Usually the sewer water's there. <clears throat> But normally, <clears throat> on most of these developments, the developer has to push it through to his other side anyhow. They have to push it through to their other side. Yeah, but, so if you look at where we stop right now with the sewer, which is right here. Yep. We own this land. Yep. So don't we have to push it through? To Al's. To Al's. But Al's got to take it to the road, and we take it out of the road, and Wayne's yep. got to figure out how to get it to him. Does and that then, change the whacking set, is what I'm saying? Does that lower it back down? So, you know, to bring it to, bring it to Wayne, he would probably take the path of, you know, the shortest path. Correct. Well, that doesn't help everybody in the future. And now we have a sewer system that doesn't quite work right and doesn't work for future development. So the way this is showing things is that it's, it's setting us up for the future. For Wayne to have to put all of that sewer in would be astronomically yep. out. But it's in the best interest of the future of the city to get it where it needs so to be. So if it's in the best interest of the city, and clearly it would benefit them as well as us, we should be picking up some more of the fees probably on our own to get the water, to get it all closer there so that it's more in line with someone that would be developing in town. Yeah, and so what I did, I put together what the cost would be to put it all in and then to spread it out over everyone because there isn't necessarily a fund just to extend trunk mains. There, we have our sanitary sewer fund, but that's for maintaining and keeping the entire system going, including the wastewater treatment plant. So it hasn't been, developed into our fees or anything and therefore put it onto the wagon sack like many cities do um, when you come into a different area that needs a special extension for example Oatana when Cabela's went in 
there was a special black and sack for that because they had to put in a large chunk main to get all the way out there. Now, did the city participate? In? Probably. I don't remember. Um, but I guess I was leaving it up to you guys on how much does the city participate? Well, I understand that. I'm just trying to find a creative way to make it feasible for everybody because I don't know if I want to say that I want to totally subsidize these guys on the back of every taxpayer in this town. Correct. Either. And so what was proposed, all the taxpayers in the town aren't paying anything for it to happen. They're funding it to begin with, but they get paid back. Um, but the council could also look at it as there's an investment into this town. Yep. And how much of an investment would they like to make? Well, at the sake of the whole night, I think we need to move on. We obviously know where we need to get creative. And we gotta come up with something. So, and I, I don't see, I don't know that I even agree that we have to have all 100% of it pay back to us. Maybe it's a smaller number, and because I could argue that if it were to go the way we'd like it, then I mean our tax value, the overall tax value of the city should go up quite a bit. Well, I agree, Craig. The park, the park is going to be development agreements. So that there is an agreement that this land will get developed if we're going to put this stuff. True, in. true. You know, we gotta, we gotta work out for that too. And you're talking to some landowners that may not want to develop too. So now you're still going to have to cover the trunk line for three out of six, or you know. So I mean, I, I agree. It's got to happen. I, I can see it's got to happen. But we need some commitment too. Totally agree. That's what I'm saying. Everything I'm saying is trying to meet somewhere, you know. And what will happen is the person that waits 20 years, the whack and sack's going to be 58 grand per acre by then, so we'll make up for our, <laughs> for our money now. <laughs> mm. Got a few ideas for guys floating around up here. And Marv had a good point last time was, you know, it's going to be cheaper today than it will be, you know, mm -hmm. in the future. I don't know, it all depends. like I said, right now it all depends next year. It's kind of, not looking real good out there for construction for next year. So I'm saying that next year, as of right now, um, working towards the fall, prices I actually think are gonna go down, in my opinion, because people are gonna wanna secure work for the following year. Um, but, let's see. <clears throat> I worry about that some. I agree, I get what you're saying, but you could have lines that sit in there for years uh, that doesn't get used. No, because we, we only do them as it develops. No, but he's talking to put them in now because of the cost. Oh. Right? And that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's what, like, Mark, Mark, Mark talked about it before, and I get the point on that. Yeah, I think Mark had a good point when he okay. said that. So. But, but then but you have one line that could be sitting out there 30 years that doesn't get used, and it's not pulling poly yeah. into it and all that stuff to help with the longevity of it. And, Uh, right now, let's work on improving the feasibility study. I yeah. made a motion to approve a resolution. We added that, didn't we? I made a motion. You made it? We seconded it? Yep. Well, imagine that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That carries. I'm getting a CO2 headache. I'm not going to be able to think here in a couple minutes. All right. So, what's the point? That's going to be a phase for two hours. So Cheryl, what do you want to do? You want to have a special meeting with the with I the think West you Development? To, you need to um, give Bill and Carla some and Jenna some time to put some figures together, um, and then sit down with all you guys and come up with some options. And then have a special meeting with these guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sooner than later, right? Yeah. Yep. The biggest help for us that we put together, I'll just say two or three options. Is, is there a consensus to do some type of help off the of 5,600 or whatever that is? Yeah. Yep. That I, would help us in my opinion, yeah, I think we need to help them because it's okay. going to benefit the city's future. I mean, we'll always have out there because that's just what it is today. The 56 could be assessed over 10 years. But if you want to help offset that, then that helps us narrow down um, some uh, options that, you know, that kind of narrow. We got a set of meeting right now. 
No. All right. Do no. you guys have any questions or comments or? I have one question, maybe. Um, you just look at this overall, and it's not, you know, when we talk about trying to get this thing done. But, you know, we, we did put some numbers to a rural subdivision. So I had something to compare against with the WAC and SAC and some of the things. Bill brought up a good deal. He goes, well, being that we're close to Stewartville, you know, if we put a rural subdivision in, you guys could, be, could restrict us and tie us down to where we could never afford to put it in. If it, if it came to that, does anybody know? Have you guys dealt with that yet? Or would you restrict a rural subdivision out there? We've never had to do it. We would probably want the roads and streets built to city specs because eventually we may annex it in, but we, we've never dealt with that. Um, when you say that, you mean, you know, blacktop section road, curb and gutter, storm sewer. Mm -hmm. Correct width and stuff like and that. And probably size of lots, which your lots are going to be big enough, but if somebody wanted to come in and put smaller ones, we probably would have to look at that. But mm -hmm. okay. that, that also would make a difference, I think, to, you know, when we're looking at the money. That if we knew that we had those setting that you were going to say, yeah, you got to put that in, yeah, you got to put that in, well, we can put that into that rural portion of the city. Okay, well, we got to count that out too. Or we got to, let's, let's count that out and look at over here. We got to look at all our options. Have you so dealt with that. anything like that, Jenna? Mm -hmm. And in your cities? It's, it's kind of like you have to, you want to get a commitment. Either, either it's going to go forward as residential urban, or you kind of make a commitment that we'll let it go forward as township. Okay, for, yeah. For yeah. Because you don't want to spot it in there, some of this, some of that, some of this, some of that. You would want to make a commitment as a city and say, we, we aren't going to take sewer water out there because it's mm -hmm. too much money. And then, then they're set to say, then we're going to, then we go forward. Because the township isn't going to want to do that either if it's going to be, you know, 20 acres of suburban and 20 acres of urban. And, and then sewer's got to go through, and then you got to argue about right. it. That's why you have an orderly annexation agreement. But if you make the commitment that you're just going to let it be township, and then they could go forward, and everybody could go forward thinking they're going to do two acre lots. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost that we're at that point, we're kind of at the tipping point where yeah. the decision's got to be made. Mm -hmm. I do foresee this being part of the city eventually. Um, if we start looking at our sanitary sewer, I know it's we could draw the limits. So for serviceable area, form our sanitary sewer without putting in lift stations and doing other expense we need to develop in this area, and that's what we want to use. So we can't break down much more without extra costs. Um, and this could be comparable to, okay, let's extend that over and move a lift station we would have to be put in to go further south, um, things like that. So just thoughts out there, but I do foresee this area to be part of the city in the future. And that's how this all kind of started was with Wayne coming in and asking us and telling me what he wanted to do. And you know, I just thought, well, that's something we wanted to capture those taxes and it'd be a good part of the city, so let's sit down and and that's how this all started. They didn't come and say, hey, what can you do for us? It was, we want to do this and... You, you guys did a Northwest sewer study 20 years ago. So, you know, you've been, you know what's going to happen, or it's just that now you're at a point where, where the pressure is there to decide. Yeah. So, I think it's good okay. to be Anybody got anything else to add? No, I'm just going to say that I appreciate your willingness to look at ways you can, you know, work with us and um, help it be something that's a little more interesting to us than it was a few weeks ago when we met and got a little sticker shaft. So I think we can all work together to make sure it feel better. More opportunity.
Well, we want to see it happen. We just got to figure out the most creative way to make it happen for both of us. This is the whole way right now. Which sounds like this bunch is willing to look at it. So that's a good thing. <laughs> All you right. get, Al, are you on a time crunch then with this? Is that what was said earlier or not? Well, you know, kind of like what Wayne said, the prices just keep going up every year. You sit on it, so it makes it be nice to go on. But on the hindsight, you know, like I said, but I think Wade can help me a little bit. So I don't know. Yeah, um, I got individuals that want to build, but you know, I keep pushing out. They might go find someplace else. But the timing, the timing could work out where you could. Next it sounds like right on that, we need to make a decision quickly so we can see if the bid would go off this winter and then you'd have a spring yeah. time to award it. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a council, I think we have to meet sooner than later then. Pretty sure we said that four times. <laughs> 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 I'm not trying to be a jerk. Okay. All right, we're going to move on, folks. So if you want to leave, that's fine. Here. In their presentation. What's that? Not having any presentation. No. Right. no. Right. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That'll take us to Mayor Staff Consult Reports. Mayor's report tonight. We'd like to send our sympathies to the families of Sandy Jones, Larry Whiting, Carol Lynch. Thomas Campbell, Jim Glazen, and Roger Jensen. Chamber of Commerce Beholding Community Mass Drive at Fairway Foods on Thursday, August 20th from 5 to 7. The Chamber's asking residents to donate cloth masks, cloth for making masks, or thread. If you want to donate money, that's all right. The Chamber will use that to purchase disposable masks for the community. Don't forget, Trash and Treasure Days are September 19th. Sign up at the Sturtville Star now. And if you haven't heard or didn't read the Star last week about our local Aaron Simmons, he will release his Third Street Southwest. It's an album that's a tribute to growing up in Sturtville. Congratulations, Aaron. And we're going to send out a special congratulations tonight to Jenna. She's been named an associate at SEH Incorporated. Well done, Jenna. Good job. Give her a big hand. That's all I've got. Bill? Uh, this time, just the reports in your packet. Nothing really to add. Um, we've already talked about the BFW part. Uh, we put a pool update for you um, on the, um, at your desk. And then uh, we'll just hone in on some dates here and then some of these options uh, to get back to you. Yep. And then we will need, either now or when you get to Public Works Committee, uh, that group, we got a couple updates Sean and I will have for you guys that I'm telling you to look at for some projects. All right, any questions for Bill? None. We'll move on to finance. Carla? Um, we are going to do the budget workshop for the council on August 25th at 5.30. So we'll do it before the regular meeting and get through all of that. Um, if you have any ideas, directives, projects, or anything like that, please either give me a call or email me. Otherwise, I can tell you that um, right now everything is um, looking good. The preliminary budget needs to be to the county by the 30th of uh, September. I have set the truth and taxation meeting for December 8th at 6 p.m. And um, that will actually get approved probably the first meeting in September. And right now, as of the preliminary tax base numbers, um, year to year, we've got a 6% increase. So um, we are things are looking good to be able to maintain everything currently that we have and um, anything that's projected and stay within that so the city's portion of taxes will not go up. All right. Any questions for Carla? I hear your team talking, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Got your wastewater report for July in there. City engineer. Oh, yeah. excuse me, excuse me, excuse yeah, me. Public works. Public works. No, it's okay. It's been a long meeting, so yeah, I got a report. Go. <laughs> I did read it already. Yeah. One question we got for you. Mm -hmm. Aren't we irrigating out front this year? It is uh, because of the uh, culvert that's out there. He did spray, oh, okay. and. The heat this time of year, trying to get rid of the culvert, and then probably the grass will come back. It's just burning a little bit now, so it isn't done. 
All right. Any other questions for Sean? Keep up the good work. A wastewater report for July is in there. Jenna, you got anything else to report? Um, the current CFP project is moving along. Um, it seems like we don't get many comments from the public, so I take that as good. That's a good sign, usually. Um, in regards to our next CFP project, I know this one's lasting another year. Um, do you want to bring your guys' attention to? State aid funds. Um, state aid funds have been brought to a level of red, whereas you are not allowed to request more funds than you currently have allotted. And the significance of that is on previous state aid projects, we've been able to ask for our future funds for the next three years in order to fund a project. Um, we will be at red for the rest of this year and all of next year. Um, there are more projects out there than there are funds for. In fact, people, cities have requested more funds than the state even had as of March of this year. And it's a first come, first serve on those funds. Um, with regards to that, our next project is supposed to be a state aid project. Um, and we would have wanted to use that same situation of borrowing ahead for that. Um, with that information, I guess, I think we should be starting to look ahead at it sooner rather than later to plan appropriately of whether or not we have to push the further down the line or if it can actually happen. So, just wanted to, sorry to be the bearer of that. Which means start plans for 2022 kind of at this time. Which means we may have to shuffle Fifth Avenue around and do some other ones. I think we should look at the feasibility of it and really look at the cost of Any other questions for our engineer? Thanks for all the work you do, Anna. Library directors, no library, no fire chief. That takes us committee commission board reports. Chamber of Commerce has got their newsletter in there, the e newsletter. We met over there today, Bill and I did, with uh, Congressman Hagedorn. Was at the chamber office today. He was in town. Checking out, see how we were doing, how it was living through the coronavirus. But good conversation. EDHRA. Meeting next Tuesday. Finance. Nothing. Library. Nothing. Park board. Oh, um, met on Monday. The hockey boards are here, and um, we talked about the girls' golf project. That I already filled you in on that, and um, and then the the tennis courts. There's potential to be able to resurface and and fix them up next, maybe next year, in the next couple of years, right? But better reduce costs. Right. Sean's been working on that. So we're looking at doing the stuff ourselves, kind of uh, instead of having a general contractor come in. It was one hundred and twenty-five, hundred thirty thousand before. I heard they're super. Did we get the cost down to around seventy thousand? Wow. Huh. All right. Personnel. Nothing. Planning zoning. Uh, we had the uh, met last week for two things on the night's agenda. We need in September. Mm -hmm. All right. Public safety. Jason, you got anything? Uh, sure. right. You got the calls of service. Thank you very much. In there, public works. Bill, you had some. Oh, just um, should we try the first part of Monday later this week? When we gotta you have to have a three meeting. So he can email you guys tomorrow because you we need to have a meeting. So we'll email him. Yeah, yeah. What the dates are? Fair yeah, we'll find a time that works for him. We're just saying sooner than later. Ready? Um, no, they're doing a Zoom update uh, type thing, but there haven't really been the formal meeting. So. Roll call. 
Um, minutes from your packet, they continue to work on that line 25 year plan. So. Let's do 180. How's anything going back there? It's going. Good. <laughs> the Transit Advisory Committee, no report tonight. Communications, no communications. Anybody want to use the open mic? No open mic. It takes us I'll move to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. I don't want you on to get out of here. I'm missing the cool part. Oh, no, the thing is, I.